It for trade and industry, Alan Tremating, Monday came under great pressure from members of Parliament's appointment committee to explain how the Ekufo Ado administration will roll out its flagship One District, One Factory campaign promise. The minister-designate was coerced by the committee for well over three hours, sought to clarify how the new government will ensure its policy will be implemented. You'll recall Mr. Chairman Ting uh, has come under some criticism for collapsing the presidential special initiatives. Mr. Chairman Ting explained the thematic areas that will drive the one district, one factory policy. First is improving the competitiveness of existing local industries. Clearly, there is value in starting new industries, but we want to look at existing companies, help them to become more competitive. Uh, and so that's the first uh, element of our agenda for industrial transformation. Uh, we are working towards being able to provide a stimulus package for existing industries, which will involve us undertaking a diagnostic study of these companies and identifying exactly what it will take for them to become more competitive. Because we believe that if they are able to enhance their competitiveness, they will be able to create more jobs and also enhance our revenue generation. The second is the One District, One Factory Initiative. We recognize that even if, admittedly, it is useful to support existing companies, we recognize that the concentration of existing industries, either by chance or design, is in the major uh, cities of Ghana. So the One District, One Factory Initiative is designed to do a number of things. First, to create massive employment all over the country. And secondly, to add value to our natural resource base. Thirdly, to identify potential strategic export commodities, which then would help our export revenue uh, generation. Uh, fourthly, also to identify import substitution products that could also help us reduce our um, uh, uh, expenditure, uh, foreign exchange expenditure. Uh, okay. Chairman, if you permitted me, since you are rolling out competitiveness of local industry, what will you be seeking to do and within what timelines? Uh, initially, we would undertake a diagnostic study. Uh, let's take for granted we have 100 companies that we believe are potentially viable but are currently distressed. We, as I sit here now will not be in a position to determine the specific support that they need to improve their competitiveness. So the starting point is for us to do an audit of these companies, identify exactly what they require to become competitive, and then we'll provide a comprehensive package of support to help them improve their competitiveness. Honorable, we'll be relying on your competence and expertise. What will you rule out mm. as a package to enhance competitiveness? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, even at the risk of sounding competitive, uh, I, I, I'm suggesting that the only way we can come to a determination as to what they require to become competitive is to do a diagnostic study. Some of the companies may only need uh, marketing support. Some may require an infusion of new technology. Some may require uh, additional uh, investment capital. So uh, it, it is important that we do it on a case-by-case -case basis. But just to add, Mr. Chairman, that the important thing is for um, for our private sector to appreciate and recognize that the government is committed to making sure that the private sector survives and leads the process of transformation. Now, Mr. Alan Shermating also promised to initiate major trade interventions for the private sector by making capital easily accessible to industry players to create more jobs. First, if the reference is to our previous term of office in government, uh, is that your understanding or I remember? 
go past and into the future, what will you do for the private uh, sector of Ghana? You are free to share your previous, but we are more interested in going forward. Well, first is facilitating access to capital, particularly medium to long-term capital. We all recognize that it is not as if uh, the banks uh, in this country do not provide uh, credit and financing, but we know it is the tenor of the of the credit that they provide, which is a challenge for our companies. So our first focus will be on facilitating access to medium and long-term capital. It is in this regard that we've made a number of commitments. First is to refocus the operations of the National Investment Bank to provide uh, medium to long-term credit. Secondly, we've proposed the establishment of an industrial development fund, which would uh, literally do uh, the same thing. And also, uh, we've, we've talked about reviving and recapitalizing existing uh, financial intermediation that would also produce the same thing. Uh, that's only, that's, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Nominee. You've just mentioned capital for the private sector, where you have a government which overcrowds the private sector and a prohibitive interest rate regime. What will you do to improve that? What we intend to do is to make sure that government limits its borrowing from the uh, financial uh, sector, particularly from the banks. Now, once you do that, the banks have literally no option but to increase uh, the delivery of capital uh, uh, to support uh, uh, b b businesses. So that's, that's the first thing. Secondly, if we reduce the treasury bill rates, then it reduces the appetite of banks to lend to government. And that also will release more funds to support uh, uh, private, the private sector. So those are two things that I know uh, we intend to do. Now, African countries are to begin the implementation of a free zone policy for all inter-regional trade and activities. The trade minister designate Alan Chiramating says government will embark on an aggressive export diversification program which will enhance the country's trade competitiveness. Now, the fifth component is to promote exports. Again, if we did all that I've talked about and do not focus on how we expand our export base, we will not generate enough foreign exchange to support our local currency. So underpinning all this is a very aggressive program to support export development. I mean, for over a century, we've been relying on cocoa, gold, and timber as our major export crops. And we believe that it is time for us to look at export diversification. And in this regard, we are not going to just look at our export destination that has served us well for many years. We're going to concentrate on the continental and regional markets. Uh, I'm sure, Mr. Chairman, it will be pleasing for members to note that there's something major going to happen in Africa, which is not yet on the radar of many countries, which is Africa is going to become a common market, um, a, a continental free zone by 2017. So those countries who would take the lead in transforming their productive infrastructure through industrialization now would have an opportunity to export to the whole of Africa duty-free, quota-free. So that is also the basis for our export uh, program. We will still look at Agua because I think it provides significant opportunities for uh, export revenue generation. And of course, the EPAS is also an opportunity for us to diversify. Last but not the least is business development and uh, investment particularly in respect of small business uh, promotion. And we are proposing a new entrepreneurship and innovation plan, which will enhance our support to small and medium uh, enterprises. So these are the six strategic pillars 
underpinning uh, industrial transformation agenda. If we had time, I could go into more detail. Let's turn our attention elsewhere, and it took the intervention of the police to avert what would have been a clash between two youth groups at the Gamp Mancha Palace Monday morning. One of the factions that arrived at the palace to prevent the other group from performing rituals ahead of the induction of Ni Taki Adama Lacha II as president of the Gant Traditional Council. That position is by tradition occupied by the Gant Manche, but a court disagreement had prevented him from assuming that position. However, a January 17 ruling ordered the Gant Traditional Council and its acting president to induct Ni Taki Adama Lacha. Uh, the second as the president of the council. Joy News says Maxwell Agbaba reports. Well, you tell me what is she want to ask you, man, to me, I am in Fitega. I am a dragon. Tafuache Nikwe Blinka is the leader of the youth group vowing to prevent the Gamanche and his entourage from assessing the palace for the rituals to be carried out ahead of a planned induction ceremony on Tuesday. The group believes a late chief of the Gan state, King Taki Teria III, who died in London in 2013, ought to be buried before the induction ceremony can take place. We had a chief who is dead. He's called Blankson. That chief has to be buried before any ritual can be carried out. We did not come here to fight, but if you want to fight, we are also here. We will not agree. We are here to maintain peace. If you are here for another reason, we will beat you. Okay. Because we are not about maintain peace. We are small peace. One week is from last week Wednesday, and it would end this coming Wednesday. So this middle-aged man who claims to be a member of one of the Gan royal families and a loyalist of the Gan man Chani Taki Adamalache, the second believes. The 17th January ruling must be respected with the government sworn in as president of the traditional council. The official thing is that a letter has been written to the traditional council and there is a plan, a decision to install, induct the government as the president tomorrow. Okay. It's supposed to happen tomorrow. I mean, the palace belongs to the government. He comes there as and when he wants to come there and undertake his activities. However, early in this, I mean, this morning, we hear that some people have invaded the police. Mm. And whose hand is in it? Who is the first suspect? Okay, so the it's going to happen. Just watch it. It would happen. And the police should do the right thing. The Kanishi Divisional Commander ACP and Estobusu believes a meeting with the two feuding factions can resolve the issue amicably. Trying to persuade them. We are calling both sides to see how. Um, to settle the issue, that is all. So we are all going to meet and then come to a amicable solution. That is what, that's what we are going to do now. So for now, everything is okay. Yeah, there's no problem. Uh, they all agree to meet. So we are going to see how best we can come to uh, settlement. Okay. So um, do you have any idea the specific issue they are speaking to, the reason why they don't want their government to go ahead? Well, they said their chief is dead, and uh, they want the chief to be buried before those functions to uh, go ahead. They will allow those functions to go ahead. Mm. That is what they are saying. When they need to perform certain uh, 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 certain rights before they will allow the chief. Without that, if they don't, the chief don't do that, they will not also allow. But the situation could escalate when Ni Adamalache returns to the palace for the induction ceremony on Tuesday. And trust us to report as things unfold later today. The Volta Regional Headquarters of the Ghana National Fire Service has been, equipped, it's, uh, has been equipping its staff with modern firefighting techniques to enable them to upgrade their expertise on fire safety for fuel dispenser operators and fuel stations. According to the Regional Fire Command, it is prudent to frequently educate filling station workers uh, considering the emerging trend of fire outbreaks at fuel stations. Citing the current Labadi gas explosion and the June 3 twin disaster, the fire officers attributed the cause of most fire outbreaks to negligence and ignorance. 
Speaking at the workshop, the regional fire commander Mausi Into Sapong charged fuel dispenser operators to insist clients adhere to safety instructions at filling stations to avoid fire outbreaks. She also advised managers of the filling stations to ensure fire officers are present to supervise offloading of fuel from the tankers into reservoirs at other stations. We would invite the association as a, uh, as a body and then we would discuss with them. So as a, as a team, you can come together and what is done, not uh, what a, 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 a filling station or a station wouldn't accept, the other two wouldn't accept. So that it wouldn't be like, if you don't give me a way somewhere else. That attitude, I think it should stop. It should stop. So next week somewhere we would invite the association as a group and they'll come and they will discuss these things with them. I think when we do this and we are firm on the ground and we don't entertain some things, definitely as attendants and then the fire service will have a peace of mind not to attend by us and to prevent them as we start. Them. I said fire is a shared is a shared responsibility. I expect that you help us to also help you. The participants were urged to carry out routine checks on their pipes and electrical installations, correct any error noticed and make visible safety instruction signages at their various stations. They were also trained on how to combat mine of fire. The Volta region witnessed a drastic reduction in fire cases within the Harmerton period, recording 54 fire cases between December 2016 and January 2017 against 137 fire cases recorded within December 2017. 15 in January 2016. Fred Kwame Asari's report for Joy News. And before I go, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend Charles Palmer Bacall, is asking parents to take charge by ensuring that their children are responsible in the way and manner they dress and carry themselves about in the church and society at large. Most Reverend Palmer Bacall, who was speaking at the Golden Jubilee anniversary of the St. Theresa Catholic Church in Kanishi, Accra, says many young people are blindly copying certain lifestyles which does not augur well for their spiritual growth. He's therefore called on the youth to be responsible. I am talking about anything that will distract you when you come to church from relating with the Lord your God. Because you came here to join other people to worship the Lord, to praise and glorify the Lord. And so when he says, remove the sandals from off your feet, not only your heart, sin, and the rest, anything that will be a source of distraction. Some of you distract by unnecessarily loud perfume. The word is unnecessarily loud perfume. I don't say don't put on perfume. But if you know what is the use of perfume, which is supposed to attract attention, the perfume the Lord requires of you in church is holiness. Mothers are normally indulgent with their sons and hard on their daughters. Take control of your sons and let them know what they can wear where they can wear it and where they cannot wear it, period. So let us make sure that they understand that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep it clean and dress it up well. I am not saying overdress. The girls, they overdress. Obey. Sometimes too, I wonder. Today I told you I was going to talk to you. Sometimes too, I wonder, you the women, tell me, when you go to buy cloth, do you don't get enough cloth to buy? <laughs> Why do you have to buy the cloth and let them cut everything away and then you have small piece lying? Yeah, one cutter, do one fancy. Now, what are how many men you found? I'm going here. And sometimes if you are in trouble and you go and sit behind some young lady for the whole mass, you won't pray. <laughs> the things you are seeing over there, 
will distract your attention with the Lord your God. So the best thing to do is to get up and go and sit somewhere. Now, do you see why in the Catholic Church, formerly the men did not sit where the women sat? It was to avoid trouble for the men. Know what you are going to do. Please dress adequately so that the Lord your God will see that you are conscious of the fact that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, you cannot afford to expose unnecessarily what should not be exposed unnecessarily. And saying it as it is, as always, is the most reverend. Charles Palmer Backle. Uh, there will be more on this conversation. Very interesting, very revealing, but that's what happens in most of the churches today. That's it for the AM News. Uh, there will be more news coming up in the newspapers. Uh, we'll also visit a few of the online portals, but still ahead in this show, my colleague Justice Bedo has put together a piece, but this is a piece that people have lived with. Young girls being forced in marriage, but thankfully, uh, another young lady who also went through this same unfortunate situation is helping them find a new skills for them. It's a piece that we'll share with you right here on the AM show. Uh, and if you're a woman, uh, every woman, almost all of us has experienced one infection or the other. There's a, a very common one, which is candidiasis. We'll have a conversation on that later this morning right here as well. We've got AM Talk and some entertainment.